in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Beacon mic for the first time. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the interface. On the far left hand side, you have your profiles. You can save them here by right clicking, saving, renaming, deleting, duplicating your profile. You also have icons right here to do that. To create a new profile, you hit the plus button. I'm going to go ahead and recreate a new profile here. Note that because I'm creating a new profile from scratch, some of the volume is going to be a little bit quieter in this video until I get everything set up correctly. So I've gone ahead and created a new profile. So I'm completely at the default settings that come with the microphone. The first thing you want to do is go over to the headphones tab and make sure you've selected the right output level for your headphones. I'm actually using 300 ohm Sennheiser HD 6XXs. So those are high impedance headphones, so I'm going to turn this up so I can hear myself better. There's two other things I want you to note. On the far right hand side, you have this mic output. This lets you know exactly how loud you are going into your computer. You wanna be on the upper end of the talk area by the time we're done doing this video. In the very bottom right hand corner, we do have a little recorder here. After we've set up your microphone gain, we can make a recording of your voice up to 10 seconds and it'll loop over and over and over again through your microphone chain so you don't have to talk while you are trying to set up your microphone. If you can't hear yourself, make sure your headphones are plugged directly into the Beacon mic for this part. You can unplug the headphones afterwards and use whatever headset or headphones you're using after we've set up all of the microphone stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is going to the mic setup page. You can access this by clicking on the mic chain icon and going down to mic setup. Mic gain is pretty self-explanatory. What you want to do is as you are speaking, you want to be well into the green area up into the yellow. You'll notice for me, I'm on the lower end of the green area and that's probably fine, but I am going to bump it up. Let's bump it up to plus 9 dB instead. And that's it. It's really not difficult to go ahead and set up your mic gain for the first time. Next, we're going to go to the noise suppression. The noise suppression is also really simple, but let's talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and enable it by clicking on the button in the top left-hand corner, and it's going to automatically put the amount to 80% and sensitivity to 83%. In the viewer, you'll see two lines, a white line and a green line. The white line is my voice. You'll notice it goes up and down with my voice as I speak. The green line is what my noise floor is, or essentially the noise that's being removed. If I stay quiet for a certain amount of time, you'll notice that the green line will change to yellow and it'll start moving and trying to find your new noise floor. The amount is set to 80% by default. The higher the amount, the more of your noise floor we remove. The lower the amount, the less of the noise floor we remove. In the end, we think the default of about 80% is a pretty good place to start. It's not going to have a major effect on your voice, but it's also going to keep your noise floor down to a minimum. The sensitivity is how sensitive your microphone is to changes in your noise floor. The higher the sensitivity, the more this line is going to shift to yellow and try and find a new noise floor. We like to keep it pretty high, but most people aren't going to touch the sensitivity. If you have a static environment that never changes, you can actually do a snapshot mode. What snapshot will do is rather than that green line turning yellow to find a new noise floor, you'll take about a six second snapshot and then that green line will stay static no matter what happens to the room noise around you. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick snapshot just so you can see what happens. Now it's locked into my noise floor and it's not going to change. In the end, most people are gonna end up using adaptive, but both options work great. Next, let's go to the expander. In its simplest form, an expander is very similar to a gate in the sense that when you speak, your voice goes above this horizontal line threshold and lets all of your voice through. When you stop speaking and your voice drops below the threshold, it's gonna stop sending audio through. Now where an expander and a gate differ is what happens once your voice gets below this threshold line. With a gate, once your voice drops down below the threshold line, the gate closes completely and doesn't let any audio through. An expander, however, 
essentially compresses down your noise below this threshold, which makes it a much more natural open and closing environment. While the mechanics of an expander are a little bit more complex than a gate, setting it up is not. All you need to do is find the right threshold by staying quiet and seeing where your noise floor is. You can see mine is right around negative 90 to negative 93 dB. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to click and type to find how loud my noise floor is when I do kind of normal noise things that I would do while I was streaming or creating content. As you can see, when I do that, my noise floor is a little bit closer to negative 60. So the cool thing about an expander is all I need to do is bring this threshold up to about negative 60. And now you'll notice when I click and when I type, it's now below that threshold. Let's talk a little bit about the expand amount. So you'll notice that we've shown everything as a gradient here. When your voice is green or when this line is green, it's letting all of your audio through that your microphone is picking up. When it's red, it's letting none of the audio through that your microphone's picking up. However, you'll notice that it goes from a gradient from red to green as we cross the threshold line. That's letting you know approximately how much of your audio is actually coming through. With a gate, you would pretty much always have red or green, but with an expander, it expands into that threshold, which again is much more natural. If I want the sounds just below the threshold to be closer to red and orange, AKA to let less of that noise through, all I have to do is raise the expand amount. If I turn it all the way up to 100%, you'll notice that it goes from red to green very quickly. Most users are gonna find the best settings at around 35%. We also do have advanced parameters for the expander for those who know a little bit more about what they're doing. I'm not gonna explain those in depth here, but know that they're an option for you. Now that we've set up our expander, let's go to our compressor. So our compressor is pretty cool and also pretty straightforward. The biggest thing to keep an eye on here is this red attenuation number. A compressor does exactly what it sounds like it does. It compresses your voice. See this horizontal line here at negative 20 dB? That's our threshold. When my voice goes above that threshold, it's going to start compressing my voice based off of a ratio. In simple mode, we have a percentage, but in advanced mode, we have an actual ratio that you can adjust. I'm gonna keep it in simple for now. At 33%, that ratio is about four to one, which is pretty much standard. So let's talk about that attenuation amount. So that attenuation amount is letting me know approximately how much volume I'm losing by compressing my voice. You'll notice as I'm speaking with my threshold set at negative 20, that I'm losing anywhere between negative three to negative five dB on average. This is where the makeup gain comes in. Because I'm losing about five dB, you'll notice that my input levels are louder than my output levels. I wanna get that volume back. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this back in. I'm gonna go ahead and make it five exactly. The one thing is, is that depending on how loud or quiet you get, your attenuation is going to vary a little bit. So this makeup gain is going to be an average of about how much volume you lose by using the compressor, but it's not always going to be 100% the same every time. Let's talk a little bit about setting the threshold. If you're brand new to using a compressor, negative 20 is a great threshold to start at. If you drop your threshold below negative 20 down to like negative 25 or negative 30, you're gonna have to use a lot of makeup gain to make up for all the compressing you're doing at the lower volumes or you're going to have to use a much lower ratio. So you actually can get the amount of volume back that you would be compressing. In the end, negative 20 at 33% is usually pretty good for most people. And as long as you did mic setup correctly here, you should be attenuating between negative three and negative six dB on average. Now let's take a look at our output gain on the far right hand side. So right now you'll notice my mic output has me about perfect. I'm peeking up into the yellow, mostly in the green. So I don't actually need any additional output gain here. That's perfect and then that's exactly what we wanna see. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up 
our equalizer. By default, your equalizer is set to simple. What that means is that I can raise and lower the dots on this plot, but I cannot actually move them from side to side. For those of you who have never used an equalizer before, an equalizer is how you make your voice sound the way you want it to in its most simple definition. If I put this up way high, you'll notice that I get really harsh and essy. If I put this down way low, I get very muddy. So then the goal of an equalizer is to help you bring out the good sounds of your voice and minimize the bad sounds of your voice. With this simple equalizer, there's quite a bit I can do. For most people, you're going to approach equalizing the same way. People usually want a little bit more bass. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add about five dB of bass. The center green icon is mids. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna just drop my mids a little bit. And now you've noticed already that I have a lot more fullness in my voice. For a lot of people, this is already way better than what they've had in the past. We also have tools like the de and Exciter that we can talk about and enhance this. However, I want to go into the Advanced EQ. You can go to the Advanced EQ by clicking on the Advanced EQ switch, and I also recommend turning on the guide. Now that you've added the Advanced EQ, you'll notice that our dots are gone. So let's go ahead and add a new one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new dot, and I want to add my bases first. So what you can do is lift up this dot and start going over until you find the base of your voice. For me, you can see that my bass is kind of around 125 hertz or so. However, for most voices like my own, I like to set it on the lower end of my bass. Well, then what I want to do is I want to narrow this curve a little bit. If I leave it like this, you'll notice that this curve is taking up over half of my voice frequencies, and that's too much. So what I can do is I can put my mouse over this dot, and using my scroll wheel, I can narrow this down a little bit. Because I'm going to be working on my mids next, I'm going to have this pretty narrow so that it doesn't touch my mids, which is around 500 hertz. Next thing I'm going to do is add another band, and we're going to go down to my mids. And I'm going to go right below the broadcast frequency range. I like to have a little bit of a broadcasty tone to my voice, something that is kind of something you would hear on an audiobook or a podcast. So when you do that, you remove your broadcast frequencies like this. I'm going to narrow it again. You'll notice if I bring it all the way down here, I get overly broadcasty and radio sounding. I don't like that as much. I want to just have a nice little dip here at about negative three. So for a lot of people, this is all you need to do for your voice. For me though, I want to activate my highs just a little bit more. So I'm gonna add a band. I'm gonna slide it over to about 2000 Hertz. Now down below, I have a bunch of different controls for my EQ. I know these feel a little bit daunting if this is your first time, but you can just follow along with me. This bottom middle button is called a high shelf. We're going to go ahead and click on that. So now we have a high shelf. What a high shelf does is it creates a shelf of all of my highs. See this shelf right here? This obviously sounds way too harsh and activated. So we're going to bring this down. And I'm not, I don't want to do too much here, so I'm just going to add about 1 dB of gain. That's it. I'm just bringing out the highs a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and reset the de and the exciter for a second. You'll notice something about my S's right now is that they're very harsh. That's what a de is for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a sound, and I'm going to raise my de Right around 35 is where my S's start to kind of stop feeling so harsh. But now they sound kind of lispy and flat. This is where an exciter comes in. With the de we removed the unappealing S's, and now with the exciter, we're going to re-add them in a way that's much more pleasing to the ear. My voice is a little bit different, so I'm going to raise my frequency up to about 4,500 hertz. You don't have to be super exact with all of these numbers. You don't have to recreate them exactly. This is a lot more art than it is science. So now that I've got my fr exciter frequency a little bit higher, I'm gonna go ahead and hold this and bring in my S's again. See how that's coming back in and see how much better these S's are starting to sound? Hello, check one, two, test, 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 test. 
all the way at 100, s s s that tends to be pretty harsh, right? One thing that you'll notice is that the frequencies that were exciting are actually being shown on the plot here. You can see they're moving a lot. This is going to be too much. But I am going to back it down a little bit to about, let's say, about 57. Sa, sa, hello, Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Everybody's thresholds for S's are different. What you want to do, your goal should be, you want your S's to be pronounced, you want them to be pleasing, but you don't want them to be overwhelming. Now let's talk about bass enhance. The bass enhancement suite is really cool. It's designed to help bring out bass frequencies of your voice without being a static boost of all frequencies in your bass like we did with the EQ. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up a little bit higher than I normally would, just so you can hear the difference. Hello, this is me talking into the microphone. This is me talking into the microphone. This is me talking into the microphone. Here at 10, I obviously have way too much going on in the bass of my voice. You'll notice that none of these tools you're ever using at full. We give you a wide range to use your tools, but very rarely are you ever going to use something at max. I'm gonna dial this back to zero for a second so you can hear me without the bass enhancer on. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring it up to about four. And now something you'll notice, especially if you're wearing headphones, is that this extra layer of depth just came into my voice down here where you see this line thickening. This thickening line is telling you what we're doing to your voice. We're thickening those frequencies. We have four different styles of bass enhance that you can set up. The first style is pretty wide and goes down pretty deep. It goes pretty deep, but something you'll notice is that my plosives tend to be a little bit hot for my voice. Puh, 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 puh. Let's try number two. Number two is a lot thinner. You'll notice it goes from about 40 dB to about 105 dB. This sounds really nice for my voice, and it gets rid of a lot of the pa 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 ba ba ba, the very harsh plosives that I had with option number one. Option number three is a little bit wider and goes a bit higher. For some people, especially those with higher voices, this is going to sound great. But for someone like mine, it might be going up a little bit too high. And for the fourth one, you'll notice that the frequency range is about the same as number three, but it's compressing things a little bit differently. Three and four can be pretty similar unless you're really paying attention. For my voice, I'm going to stick with number two. It's a nice, light touch for my voice. And that's it. That's how you can set up your microphone with Beacon Mic. We know that all of these tools can be overwhelming. So if you have more questions about these tools or need a hand with any of them, please join our Discord and ask those questions, post some samples, and we'd be happy to help. You can join our Discord by going to beacon.gg Discord. That's it for this tutorial. We'll see you for the next one.